Alone in the Dark 2 is the Uva Bowl mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world that even though the first movie flopped, he's committed to pumping out shitty sequels until somebody stops him. Maybe you could shoot me. It starts off in Central Park, where this guy's been stabbed because he's in Central Park, while Ziggy's telling her there's a 100% chance this movie's gonna be shit. When I mean, you don't stand a chance against her, not out here. So they take him to the only place the movie's budget could afford. And the first thing she does is show why women aren't allowed in the men's room. That's not for hanging your purse, sweetie. While they're vandalizing the restroom, Scud Farkas is crying in one of the stalls, which is classic Scud Farkas. So they smash some gum and then unload on the wall with guns they magically have now and then don't have and then have again. Luckily, none of this matters because it just ends and never comes up again. Thankfully, we get more Scud Farkas because that is what the people are clamoring for. He meets up with Christian Slater, who at the time was going through his Johnny Tran phase. It's delicate stuff, and it don't come cheap. $20 is $20, let's just leave it at that. Black dagger about this big. I might be interested in that. Anyways, this movie has taken a really dark turn. But oh thank god, when they find a private place, Scut stabs Chris Translator. <sighs> so we don't have to see where that was going. Then these guys show up and blast Scut for who cares why and takes Chris Tran on a road trip where they perform the advanced medical procedure of poking his stab wound. Which was a massive success. So they take him to this farmhouse and since that bathroom ate up most of the budget, like 90% of the movie is gonna have to take place here. Since it's a shitty movie with no budget, of course Danny Trejo's here. No, I can't get this damn thing to work. Along with Wish.com Arnold. Do you really feel them coming? Now we get some top tier Uva Bowl writing where nobody answers anyone's questions. How's he doing? How do you feel? Where am I? And nothing makes any fucking sense. Now you've been stabbed. As a result, you're gonna see things. Thanks, Doc. How about something that's not really fucking stupid? Don't ever look into the mirror in your dreams. That's not how dreams work. If this happens, Boyle here will shoot you. Oh, for fuck's sake. He already has to explain what he and Scott were doing in a truck stop restroom together. He really doesn't need this shit right now. So he escapes by coming up with some Mission Impossible shit. Where is he? He's gone. Which involves just grabbing the shotgun they leave right next to him. Everything's going great. Until he remembers, oh yeah, someone fucking stabbed him. So now he's regretting all of this, which is so crazy because so is the audience. Luckily, they show up and say smart things. Is he looking into a mirror? And he'd rather be convulsing in the woods than back here with these chuckle fucks. <laughs> they're still talking like they're all on different pages of the script. You're not gonna shoot him. You shoot him when I tell you to shoot him. But she went to the Steven Seagal School of Medicine and knows death stops most seizures. Go get the syringe. So she injects a load of air. I have to find the right ventricle. Right into his fucking heart. Ugh. But son of a bitch, now he starts having a series of strokes and their luck is just the worst. So they decide to finally get someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. He needs somebody who knows how to deal with that kind of wound. But most importantly, we'll do it cheaply. If anybody can help him, Abner can. But he can't believe she just said some dumb shit like that. I told you never to mention his name again. He's got a much better idea. Go see Abner. Now run along. The men have important work to do. You looked in the mirror. I know you did. Oh my God, get over the fucking dream thing. 
You're putting us all in danger. You kidnapped him. Go f yourself. We check in with her. And as far as doctors go, he just might fit this movie's budget. Willis is on the phone. His cow died after she took the medicine you gave her. It could still go either way. Tell him to go to hell. F yeah, he's hired. And he doesn't disappoint when he makes her rub his cud into the stab wound and then injects some glow in the dark sh right into his face for some reason. That makes you invisible. That's not what they asked for, but sh okay. If your hair falls out tomorrow, then it was too strong. Okay, great, you can leave now. But not before giving Dream Guy this insane warning. The hag will come and take him tonight. Hag, what the f they don't know either, but they're not taking any chances. So they have Ronald McDonald Schwarzenegger as a lookout. Don't touch. And what he lacks in competency. You're looking for specific patterns. He makes up for an apathy. Any readings? Should there be? Probably not, because it sounds really fucking stupid. But luckily, he has a random epiphany. She's already here. That's confirmed by these headphones that aren't plugged into anything. Oh, shit. Leave the knife there, you idiot. There's an old lady coming. Harvey, come on. Harvey, get in here. Now they're safe in this shark cage, but oh my god. She wants the dagger. How could you leave the knife, you fucking idiot? So now they have to fix Chris Trans up. And oh yeah, Danny Trejo, his six seconds of screen time has made him by far the most likable character. So let's kill him off while we're at it. My kind of mission. After succeeding in retrieving the knife, they celebrate Pastoria style. <laughs> And figure while they're already down here, they might as well finish up some household chores. While he's pretending poorly that he knows what he's doing, he gets taken out by a storage rack. <laughs> then Trejo has a heart attack or something. They never explain it. He just suddenly dies. <laughs> now she's walking around like an idiot until he grabs her and tells her she's Steven Seagal level bad with firearms. But she has no idea what he's talking about, thus proving him right. Now it's the next day, and they're given a hero's funeral by throwing gasoline around and lighting them on fire in this dry section of the woods. We're an hour into this piece of shit, and it's not going anywhere, so they go back to the doctor, and while they're looking at treasure maps and shit, she's going full Harry Potter. But luckily, she's saved from whatever that is by his rampant pedantry. It's not the gun! It's the bullet! Thanks! That's so helpful, you f***ing dick. So he gives them a folding shovel as a parting gift and wishes them the best. Somehow, all of that only ate up five minutes of screen time. So back to New York, I guess where they can hopefully run out the clock by solving mysteries out of their station wagon. First up is what's the deal with this building? It turns out not much, but we do get more incredible dialogue where we learn light is helpful. We shouldn't be here when it gets dark. And this place is affected by gravity. The lab has to be in direct contact with the ground. Then they find this broken door. I'm the only one who can fit. While he could easily fit too, he goes along with it because f that. Once she tells him it's safe, he comes in to save the day and holy shit, that's one crazy looking rock. This whole thing was a resounding success, but she went to the Steven Seagal School of Medicine and knows death stops most seizures. Oh my god, lady, we're way past that. You're on the wrong page of the script again. So she pretends like she knew there was a script and they head out. So now they're crawling out of the sewer into Central Park for reasons that can't possibly make any sense. They're also being chased by this homeless lady who could really use some Valtrex for reasons I'm sure would fall apart if anyone actually gave a shit. Oh shit, there's a little wall here and going around it would be slightly inconvenient. 
but she went to the Steven Seagal School of Medicine and knows death stops most seizures. No! And while he's blaming himself for not taking that away from her, she goes full Seagal and shanks a bitch for no reason. The next day, they realize she's gone to Seagal, and there's no coming back from that. Kill Nelly. Their fears are confirmed when she starts trying to murder everyone, <laughs> and then has an accent out of f***ing nowhere. Where's the dagger? Luckily, she forgets what's happening and just wanders off, which is classic Seagal. That's the truth. Now, they need to start wrapping this all up, but they have no money and also don't care. So Uva Bull just said, I don't know, push her into that barrel or some shit. <laughs> when she finally stops struggling, he throws her limp body on the ground and asks how the f does she like it? <laughs> they all have a good laugh about it <laughs> and head inside. No, but seriously, he stabbed her right in the aorta. She's gonna die any second. 